G'day everyone, my name's Cautious Pancake, and have you ever wanted to have your own floating castle in the clouds? Well, Enshrouded lets you get pretty close, and if you stick around, I'll show you how to build your very own castle like this one that floats above the shroud. To get started, first you need to progress to the point in the game where you have the ability to build additional flame altars. Then decide where you want to build your floating base. It doesn't have to be above the shroud, you can float it anywhere, but I thought that since building in the shroud is blocked, having a base above it would be pretty nice. Building above the shroud also means that the base provides a nice starting point for a glide to various land points around the outside of the deadly fog. So if you do want to build above the shroud, the first thing to do is to select an access point that is above it where you can start the build process. Here I picked this slope that is well above it, but you could go lower or higher as you prefer. From there, place your first flame altar. If you can't find a spot and keep getting the not enough free space error, then pull out your pickaxe and dig a slot for it to sit. The flame altar should place down as long as you can sneak it on top of some relatively flat ground. Now here's the trick. Since we have our basic flame altar and a 40 by 40 build area, it's time to start to build out over the shroud using the large 4 meter shapes to make life easy. Snapping these together forms the beginning of a bridge out over the air and enshrouded doesn't enforce any sort of stability on your build. If you don't like the height that you're at, you can turn off snapping and move the blocks up or down relative to your current height, but for this build I'm going to stick with the current height and go out from there. Once you hit the limit of the build area, place another block to take up the final 2 meter gap, then place a second flame altar along the path where the build limit is. You can't place it in midair like other blocks, it has to sit on something, which is why we build the bridge out. With the second altar in place, head back to the first and open the flame altar options menu, otherwise known in game as commuting with the flame. Select the extinguish flame button and again to confirm, which starts a 30 second countdown until all of your base parts start disappearing. Except in this case it won't as you have a second flame altar also within the exact same 40x40 40 40 build area. While waiting for the altar to disappear, you can start to reclaim the bridge blocks, as eventually they won't be covered by another build area and would be lost, so it's better to remove them and keep the mats. Carefully of course, so that you don't fall down, you can do this and move backwards towards the remaining altar. From there it's a case of rinse and repeat. Build out the bridge to the build limit, place a second altar, go back and pick up the original one, then remove the place blocks in between until you're standing on the remaining altar. Once you've completed this process and you're in the position that you want your base, it's time to envision your own version of Nagrand and build a floating island. Minus the waterfalls, at least until they add water into the game. Using the build menu and the terrain type, choose your preference for laying out the land. I'm going for a rough and bumpy look to make it appear like it's been torn out of the ground, so I'm using this blob shape. As well, I'm using dirt as my material, which gives this nice grass topped look. Once you've got your shape roughed out, you can change flame altars over one last time, then lay out some of the 4 meter square shapes as a guide to ensure that the island is big enough to hold a 5x5 grid of those 4 meter blocks. Since it's not currently, I'll add a little bit more land and use the opportunity to use stone instead of dirt, which will give a slightly different look to the outside of the floating island where the grass isn't growing. It might all be a bit of a non-issue once the castle covers most of the space, but hopefully it's a little touch that adds to the overall aesthetics. Once that's complete, we can return to our original build start position and you can see the island floating out over the shroud. Additionally, the grass has regrown over the area that we dug out to place the first flame altar and we can use fast travel to quickly head back to the new base. Now that the island is formed, it's time to switch to our build menu and use the hammer on the like button. No wait, I mean, use the hammer to remove the guide blocks that we added earlier. With that done, we can add rough stone blocks all the way around the altar to form the beginning of the foundation of the castle. 
will then need an additional foundation over here and some stairs for us to access the entry. On the side of the stairs, we can block up the gap using a two meter stepped wall. And then in the opposite corner of the foundation, we can add an additional offset rectangle using a four meter foundation, followed by a series of two meter foundation blocks. So that the base isn't floating in the air, we also need to duck underneath and add additional foundation blocks to fill in the empty space. With that done, our foundation is now complete. Next, it's time to start on the ground level walls. Again, moving to the four meter and using the rough stone block, we can add in a doorway for our entrance and then switching to the wide wall, we can start to add these around the outside. You can see that sometimes there'll be a gap left, particularly between two of the walls where they've snapped to the corners. We're actually gonna use that to our advantage in a little bit. We'll skip the two meter gap for just a second while we finish with the four meter wall. We can come back and add in a two meter wall in a second. Now with the gaps, it's a little bit too bulky if we add in the four meter shape column. So instead, let's head over to the two meter and just add in a column and we're gonna switch our material over to the rough flintstone block. This adds just a little bit of visual interest to the columns that we add while also hiding the gaps between the walls. We keep building them up past the height of the current walls because they're gonna run up through the top of the base as well. With the ground floor walls now complete, it's time to start building our tower stairway. Switching over to the shroud wood block, we can start with a two meter ceiling block. Placing that in the midpoint of the wall, we can add stairs to then join up to that and head up to the next level. We continue that around until we get to the position that is above the starting point of the stairs. The reason that we build the staircase before we've built the rest of the walls is to ensure that we have the height correct for the upper floor and so that we don't end up with a stairway that doesn't meet up nicely above. Now that we know the height, we can continue the columns up so that we're sure that they align vertically all the way through the base. Once that's complete, it's time to break out the scaffold so that we can more easily build the second level of walls around the base. Once the walls are started though, it is easy enough to drop back down and continue them around once they snap to an existing wall. I should note at this point, the reason that I'm using walls without any sort of windows in them is that we're gonna add them in manually once we've completed the build. With the second level now complete, we can also begin on the third level of the base, again continuing the walls all the way around. And while we're working on this section, we're also gonna add in the roof. We're gonna add in a sloped stone shingle roof block, just like that. For the sides, add in a rough flintstone block of the stepped wall. This will just add some visual difference to the top of the entrance tower and should also match the top of the staircase tower once we get to building that. From there, we can add some additional scaffold and finish off the third level of the wall. Remember, if you miss a gap just like this one and you can't get the block to snap to the position that you want, hit X to turn off the snapping mode and you should get finer grain control over placing your blocks. With the third level complete, it's time to remove a scaffold so that we don't build through it and start on the upper floor. Using the shroud wood block to give a nice clean wooden plank aesthetic, we can build out the floor using the four meter ceiling blocks like this.
With the floor now complete, it's time to extend our stairway, continuing up around the tower like we started, with a stairway followed by a ceiling block in the corner, followed by another stairway all the way around. With the stairway complete, we can continue the ceiling blocks in a rough square shape like this, ensuring that we leave room over the stairs for you to walk up and down. With the stairway in place, it's time to start on the roof. Switching to the two meter roof shapes and selecting the outer roof corner with the stone shingle roof block material, first add in the corners of your roof. This will help you get everything aligned, assuming you can get them in the right spot. I tend to place my initial roof blocks with the snapping turned off as I found this easier. We can then switch to our inner roof corner to add a little bit of a shape over here where we're going to add in an extension room to the outside of the castle. With that complete, we need to add in some flooring, continuing out the shroud wood blocks and remove some of this wall to ensure that we can line them up with the roof that we just created. Adding back in the walls, we can use our rough stone blocks. And in this case, we will actually use a window frame just to make things a little bit easier to see out of. And we can modify this later if we don't like the position of the windows. From there, continue the roofing, the snapping mode back on to make it join up to the previous sections more easily. You can see that sometimes a block just doesn't want to snap, or when it does, it creates ridges, and that's when you know things aren't in the right position. Similarly, when you get to the end and the corner block doesn't want to go on, you can probably assume that something's not quite in the right position. In those cases, it can be easier to go back to manual placement, get the corner in the position that you know what it needs to be, and then go from there back with snapping mode. Since they don't want to line up, I think we need to get up and have a bit of a closer look. You can see the ridges between the join where it's just not right. And to get over there and have a closer look, we need to come up onto the roof and double jump over here. And there we go. You can see that those blocks that I placed don't join up with the slope below. And what we actually need to do is rip out the section that we've already done. That's where the problem lies, not with where we ended up. Once that has been repaired and the rest of the blocks around the edge created, your roof should look something like this. It's then possible to use the four meter roof, flat roof section, to finish out the rest of the roof, although it doesn't want to line up here. Instead, we might switch over and find somewhere else that snaps nicely like here, and we can then add in the rest of the blocks. And there you have it. The roof of the castle is now complete. From there, it's time to finish the stair tower. Moving back to our rough stone blocks and four meter wide walls, continue building up the wall till it's level with the top of the stairway. As you can see, where we've placed the shroud wood stairway blocks first, the edges of them will show the wood rather than the stone. And to fix that, we need to remove the shroud wood blocks from the stairway. And in some cases also remove the wall blocks that have been placed, then replace the wall blocks and then re-add the stairway. While this is a bit fiddly, it's probably still easier to do it in this order as it means that you know exactly the height of the stairway that you're going to build and you can ensure that everything lines up rather than trying to build out the tower first and hope the stairway fits afterwards. With the walls replaced and the stairway rebuilt, the stair tower should now look something like this. For the final section of the stair tower, we need to build the brickwork around the top. To do that, we're going to use the two metre wall block with the rough flintstone block material and place a row of those around the top of the tower. Then because this is slightly taller than we want, switch to the one metre single wall block and remove an entire row around the top of the blocks that we just placed. Once that's done, it's time to carve out what I think are called the crenels, crenels of the battlement of the stairway tower, leaving the merlins in between. 
If you know more about castle building than me, please correct me in the comments below if I got that wrong, but hopefully that's about what they're called. Leaving out two blocks either side, leaves a nice wide bit in the middle, and hopefully a pleasing looking top of the castle tower. In case you were wondering what the orangey yellow fuzz is, that's actually the limit of our 40 by 40 by 40 build area and appears as we're right up the top of the area that we can build in for this basic and unimproved build area. Jumping back down, you can see that that's looking a lot more impressive when you look at it from afar and even shows up when you're gliding from a little ways across the map. The walls do look a little plain in sections though, so it's time to add a little bit more visual interest. To do that, we're gonna start with some windows. Because this is a castle, we're not gonna add particularly wide windows. We wanna pretend that they're narrow little defensive arrow slits, even though they won't be. And we're doing that by leaving a couple of blocks at the bottom and going in three blocks and building in these narrow windows. You can see that even just adding in a single window lets a whole lot of light in and changes it from the sort of dark spot that it is before. On this wall, we're gonna add a little bit difference. We're gonna make our windows grow in size. So we're gonna do the first one three blocks in and four blocks high. We'll do the second one three blocks in from that. So four blocks in and then make that one six blocks high. And in the middle, we're gonna do a double wide window that's eight blocks high. There we go. We'll leave this wall in case we want to put something up on the walls later. But on this wall, we'll add in another triple window with three vertical slits. For the staircase, to ensure that it's not too dark, we'll add in some smaller windows as well. We'll add them in at around the middle point of the walls for each of our landings. last landing before the top we won't add a window just because it'll be a little bit close to the roof above it. So that's the ground floor and the tower done. Heading to our upper floor we've already got some windows over in this area over here so we might just add in one on each of the sides here and the opposite side here although as I do that I notice that there's a bit of a gap so we first need to fix that up before we can place the window. Lastly, I think we need to add some more windows over on this wall to match downstairs and also to add just that little bit more light into this upper area. Now, before we're done with the build, one final addition that I want to make is to add some blue glow to the underside of the terrain. This is to give it a little bit of separation and to reinforce the idea that the ground was torn up or thrown up from the shroud somehow and give it that little bit of extra visual interest. To do that, we need to add some additional blocks to let us get down underneath the terrain like this. And once there, we can add a little bit of a walkway and start to add in our glowy luminescent blocks. We'll do that with single blocks into the gaps in the rock where we can find it. We can be somewhat sparing with these blocks as they do glow quite brightly blue. It's difficult to see in the daylight, but much easier to see at nighttime. We'll scatter these around throughout the terrain underneath to give a roughly even spread across the bottom of the island. Once that's done, we can remove the blocks as we climb back up to the top of the staircase that we created. As you can see, when viewing the base from afar during the day, there's not much to see in terms of blue glow, but as night falls, you can see a subtle but present blue tinge to the underside of the island. It's not much, but I think it adds a nice little touch. So that's my floating castle build in Entrouded. It's a change of pace to build in a survival game that actively has no stability mechanic, and having done so, while I like the creative freedom that it gives and the lack of worry about losing build materials when something collapses, it does somewhat feel wrong, like maybe it's cheating somehow, which is weird since if there was a stability mechanic, you know I'd be actively trying to work out a way to circumvent it. 
So maybe it's just me that feels funny about it, but let me know your thoughts. Do you prefer a stability mechanic and the risk of things falling and losing materials? Or do you think that this is a nice change of pace and it means you can relax and enjoy the build more? Since even if it's not a floating base, you don't ever have to worry about the walls falling down. Either way, let me say that I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like it if you didn't already earlier and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this one. As always, thanks for watching and happy building.